The date of November 10th, 2023 became another milestone in the history of combat aviation. The newest American strategic bomber, B-21 Raider, made its maiden flight. Even before this event, and especially after it, there were a lot of publications with directly opposite opinions. This is an outstanding step forward in military aviation, some authors argued. It's an irrational waste of huge funds and, in general, strategic bombers are no longer relevant and are not needed," insisted others. So is the B-21 Raider needed and what function should it fulfill? In this video, we tried to look at this airplane objectively, without pink and black glasses, to understand its importance in our modern, rapidly becoming more and more dangerous world. Watch our work to the end, the conclusions will be interesting. Let us start with the fact that the presence of strategic bomber aviation in a state can be attributed to one of the signs characterizing the global ambitions of the country. They're in the arsenals of the United States and Russia. China's lagging, but it's making great efforts to acquire this type of weapon. For other countries of the world, strategic bombers remain an unacceptable luxury. We will not yet consider the effectiveness of strategists in a war, for example, between the US and Russia or the US and China, God forbid, of course, if such a thing happens. We'll talk about that a little bit below. But let us note that there are a large number of local wars in the world now between adversaries that are much inferior in terms of weapons technology to the above-mentioned three countries. And in these conflicts, the American armed forces are involved to a greater or lesser extent. In this case, the ability to drop tons of cheap but extremely effective gravity bombs on the enemy's heads is simply invaluable. The same B-52 Stratofortress carries more than 30 tons of payload. For example, such monsters as the GBU-5 anti-bunker bombs, capable of penetrating the ground to a depth of 61 meters before exploding or penetrating up to 19 meters of reinforced concrete. The wars in Yugoslavia, Iraq, and Libya clearly demonstrated the importance of strategic bombers. But the same B-52 Stratofortress, which began operating in February 1955, has almost exhausted its resources, and they're the backbone of U.S. strategic aviation. So replacing them is a matter of the next few years. There are 58 of them in service now, but there are B-1 and B-2 bombers, you may say. Yes, there are, but the supersonic B-1 turned out to be the least demanded type of airplane for combat operations, even though there are 100 such bombers in service. Although it has an even greater combat load, 34 tons compared to 31.5 tons in the B-52, but is much more expensive in operation. The bet on supersonic is not justified itself. In 2019, the Russians reported with great pomp that their Tu-160, practically analogous to the B-1 on Afterburner, got away from two accompanying US F-35A fighters. However, experts perfectly realized that in combat operations, the Russian bomber would have been destroyed, wouldn't have escaped the F-35 missiles. And the low observable B-2 also turned out to be very expensive, both in construction and in operation. Its cost was a staggering $1 billion, and that's without equipment, and with equipment, more than $2 billion. And the cost of one flight hour passed the mark of $170,000. At the same time, for each flight hour, it required 60 man-hours of complex maintenance. This led to the fact that Spirit was built only 20 units and they can be operated only on the territory of the USA. So the need for an airplane that would replace the old B-52 both in terms of efficiency and acceptable cost, as you can see, is quite objective. And such an airplane should be the B-21 Raider. Now let's take a closer look at it to understand whether it'll be effective in a hypothetical war with a strong technological opponent. For example, Russia. The prospective B-21 Raider bomber is supposed to be the ideological successor to the B-2 bomber. The new bomber is being developed under the LRSB program. As the B-21, it was first mentioned in 2016 when the U.S. Air Force awarded a contract for its development to Northrop Grumman. The planned procurement volume for the B-21 is around 80 to 100 vehicles, with the possibility of increasing the order book to 145 vehicles. Ultimately, the procurement volume is likely to be linked to the final price of the combat vehicle and its actual capabilities. The cost per aircraft is estimated in the range of $650 to $750 million. Presumably, the B-21 should absorb the best of the B-2 and at the same time be cheaper in terms of cost of procurement and operation. 
Cost reduction is planned to be achieved by reducing the size of the new bomber, its payload, and its range. The estimated payload of the new aircraft is 12.5 tons, compared to the B-2's 18 tons. The combat radius of the flight will be 4,000 kilometers without refueling. In the B-2, this figure is equal to 5,300 kilometers. But thanks to the reduced complexity of maintenance, the B-21 can be deployed outside the U.S. territory on its military bases. For example, Guam or Wake Island. The airplanes have approximately the same flight speed. Both have subsonic 1,000 km per hour for the B-21 against 900 km per hour for the B-2. The cost is also going to be reduced by partial unification with other aircraft of the U.S. Air Force. In particular, a power plant is supposed to use two Pratt & Whitney F-135 engines from the fifth-generation fighter F-35. Another possible alternative is the Pratt & Whitney PW9000 power plant, which is being developed based on the civilian Pratt & Whitney PW1000G engine using technologies of the mentioned Pratt & Whitney F-135. Based on the published images, analysts assume that the B-21 bomber is optimized for medium to high altitude flights. It's believed that the B-2 design originally possessed such a layout, but the Air Force's requirement for low-altitude flight necessitated a more complex trailing edge configuration. To ensure effective performance against ground and air targets, the B-21 bomber must be equipped with an active phased array radar. It can be assumed that it'll be developed based on the existing AN-APG-77 and AN-APG-81 stations installed, respectively, on the F-22 and F-35 fighters. Both of these radars are developed by Northrop Grumman, the same company that's developing the B-21 bomber. Given that the B-21 bomber's dimensions exceed those of the F-22 and F-35 fighters, the prospective radar may include a significantly larger number of transceiver modules, which in turn will increase the radar's power and thus its target detection and jamming capabilities. The B-21 bomber can also be equipped with optical location stations similar to the AN-AAQ-37 and AAQ-40 installed on the F-35 fighter. They were developed by Northrop Grumman in cooperation with Lockheed Martin. The highest sensitivity of these systems made it possible to detect the launch of a ballistic missile from a distance of 1,300 kilometers, as well as to detect shots from tank guns. The optoelectronic systems of the F-35 fighter aircraft can detect enemy aircraft as well as air-to-air -air and surface-to-air missiles with high efficiency. For its outstanding characteristics, such a system of the F-35 fighter aircraft was named God's Eye. Of course, the airplane will be equipped with electronic warfare systems. American airplanes are the best in the world. According to open sources, the B-52 bomber's electronic warfare systems are capable of protecting it from attacking fighters even at long distances. Most likely, it means that the bomber's REB interferes with the fighter's radar stations, which guide air-to-air -air missiles when firing from a long distance, and with the work of the missile's homing heads. It can be assumed that the B-21 will be equipped with the best REB equipment available to the U.S. Armed Forces. And what will the B-21 Raider be armed with? Of course, first and foremost, promising long-range, low-observable cruise missiles with nuclear warhead AGM-181A LRSO should replace the cruise missile AGM-158 JASM. The weapons bay can also be loaded with B-6111 or B-83 atomic bombs and JDAM conventional bombs. An interesting point is the presence of one large and two additional weapon bays. At least that's the impression one gets from the configuration of the lower part of the B-21 Raider. Of course, all the bays could potentially hold air-to-surface payloads, but this configuration looks more like just a separation of duties, the center bay for air-to-surface weapons and the side bays for air-to-air -air missiles. Back in 2019, Major General Scott L. Plews said in an article for Air Force magazine that the U.S. Air Force's new B-21 Raider strategic stealth bomber will have air-to-air -air combat capability like modern fighter jets. The main air-to-air -air weapon of the B-21 Raider will likely be the Raytheon-developed Peregrine missile equipped with a multi-mode homing head MLH, with range characteristics corresponding to the AIM-120 medium-range missile and maneuverability characteristics corresponding to the AIM-9X short-range missile, the Peregrine missile should have half the weight and size of the AIM-120 missile, which will double the warhead of the F-22 and F-35 fighters. Accordingly, the B-21 bomber can carry a significant number of such missiles. The presence of laser weapons on board the new bomber is very possible. 
In the United States, work on its development is generally progressing well. In 2017, Lockheed Martin won a $23.6 million contract to develop the Shield Laser Self-Protection High Energy Laser Demonstrator, which can be installed on existing and future aircraft carriers. Now let's answer the big question. Why spend $50 billion to develop a new airplane when it's easier and much cheaper to resume production of the decades-proven B-52? Moreover, with a payload almost three times greater than that of the B-21. But the B-21 is built on stealth technologies and is invisible on radar, you can argue in response. Unfortunately, invisibility is a rather conditional concept. Stealth countermeasures technologies do not stand still either. The Chinese are actively developing quantum radars and Russia is creating multi-band integrated radar networks. Given these factors, will anyone in the Pentagon take the responsibility to send an aircraft worth more than $600 million to break through air defenses? We're sure they wouldn't. So why is the Pentagon developing the B-21? Let's say a meter band radar sees a radar mark in the sky, and then what? Is it going to be able to identify the type of airplane? Target it with anti-aircraft guided missiles? No, it'd be very difficult to recognize what's in the air. It could be a B-21 Raider or Global Hawk, a decoy, or a specially targeted UAV slave just designed to provoke an attack. Guiding a missile with a meter range radar will not work either. The accuracy is insufficient. How about a S-400 type surface-to-air missile system? Yes, but at what range? First of all, the whole point of stealth technology is not to make an airplane invisible, but to reduce the range of its detection so that it could leak between the positions of air defense systems, having previously detected the radiation of their radars with its sensors, or come closer to launch anti-radar missiles, possibly together with decoys. That is, stealth allows the attacker to be the first to see the enemy's radar emission, determine its location, and be the first to strike. In addition, there's another stealth advantage. Low-power active radar homing heads of missiles can simply not capture a low observable aircraft and pass by. So in our opinion, the B-21 seems to have found the golden mean between price and cost of operation on the one hand and functionality and protection on the other. When can we expect to see the B-21 in service? If all the necessary tests are completed successfully, then in 2026 to 2028. Of course, it'd be very desirable to try out the B-21 already now, especially since there are all the conditions for this. As cynical as it sounds, the Arab-Israeli and Russian-Ukrainian war is in full swing, but as we can see, this is unlikely. Although if the Russian-Ukrainian war escalates sharply up to the use of nuclear weapons, the stakes are extremely high. On the one hand, the leading role of the West in the world is at stake. And on the other hand, Russia's very existence is at stake. So everything can be thrown into battle, including the B-21. God forbid, of course. What do you think about this airplane? Was it necessary to spend $50 billion on its development? Or was it a whim of the military? Write about it in your comments below. Thanks for watching the video. Please appreciate our labor by giving us a like or a dislike. We'll have a lot more interesting content ahead. See you next time.